One Africa. One nation. One nation. One Africa. Uhuru. So I was asked to come and, you know, just really talk why I joined the movement. And I just want to first say, Chairman O'Malley yes. 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 thank you. Thank you. I honestly don't think that it's any sacrifice that I could ever make that's too great for the future of my offspring. Mm -hmm. Not only my kids, their kids, yeah. and their kids. And the minute that I realized and had a word for what was happening in the community of African people, I had no other choice but to join this and find out and learn as much as I possibly can. I'm gonna be real, I'm a very transparent person. <laughs> I am. When chairman came to me and asked me to be the president, I had every excuse that was real, like real, a lot of subjective stuff why I couldn't be the president, obstacles and different things because of colonialism and all the different ways that it have affected my life, starting in their school systems. And this is why we have to destroy this stuff. Because I was told at a very early age, and my mom was told that I was mentally um, couldn't learn, you know, and put it in place in the classroom. Where they don't even have in um, Missouri anymore. I don't know if it's in the country, but it's called phase two, um, where I was in classrooms with kids that used the bathroom on themselves and et cetera. But they said, told my mom that because I was premature, that a side of my brain wouldn't work and I couldn't learn. But now I'm the president of an international organization. <laughs> with all kind of obstacles, but I'm I don't make, I can't make any excuse to not get the work done. Because we gotta be free. So if I can't read it, then Denise can. Denise, read this. If I can't write it, then Jordan, you write it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we gotta get it done, you know? And I know at times that all my comrades, that anybody that work with me, I probably get on your nerves, but I wanna be free. You know what I'm saying? And some days you don't want to, but I'm gonna need you to want to. You know, see, this, this thing, is, I can't turn it off. 24 hours, I go. You know what I'm saying? From the time I wake up, the first thought in my mind is what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? I got to mobilize people. You know what I'm saying? How do I wake somebody up? You know what I'm saying? And then I'm, I'm African. You know, today I have heard so many people have came up to me and said, well, you don't understand. My story is different. I'm really, I'm really being touched by colonialism. But I'm here to tell you that before you open your mouth, I knew your situation because you're black. You know, so I already know you're poor. I already know you're homeless. I already know that you're sick. I already know that you're somebody, I already know. Because it's my story. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, what we got to talk about now is how to get out of it. You know what I'm saying? Not about what, you know, not about symptoms of a system that destroyed, you know, that touched us. We already know that. But what we have to know and what we have to go hard for, no matter what subjective stuff that happened to you. Just before I came here, I have a younger sister, and we real close because we lost our three brothers. You know, three different stories, you know, even in the prison system, you know. I have a little sister that's seven years younger than me, and I have had to grow up fast because of the circumstances that I, so my family really look at me like, they feel like, dang, the revolution on took, I have to solve the problem. That's who I am. And I had to look at my little sister cry, being 12 months pregnant in an abusive relationship with a five-month-old baby, and call a shelter and have to get in there, and I can't house her. Because right yeah. now my parents are homeless. Yeah. But subjective stuff do not, calls me not to get on the plane. Yeah, yeah, right. I have to see what she going through and say, guess what? I'm fighting for us to get out of this. Yeah, yeah, I'm fighting yeah, for yeah, us to get out of this. Yeah, yeah. Don't let subjective stuff, your job, yeah, your husband, yeah, your kids, yeah, not even my kids, yeah, yeah, stop me from fighting yeah, for freedom. Nothing, nothing, not my religion, 
Let me tell you, when I met the movement, I said, oh, they crazy. They ain't say nothing about Jesus. We didn't pray. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because this is a sin problem. But see, I, I, I had, you know, but if they would have told me to, listen, I'm, t I'm not trying to tell nobody not to, you, if you want to pray, pray at home. But when you come here, let's strategize on how to get free. Yes, sir. So I don't care who you call yourself or who you pray to. When you get finished with it, we don't have no power. Yes. And we have to struggle for power. And we come into conference like this, and I love it. But I, my, my, my thing is what I want everybody to know, that when we leave here and you go back to your subjective life, continue to fight, whatever that looked like in your life. Whatever that looked like in your life, you do not have the option to make a day or hour or a second where you're not concerned about your freedom. I really don't know if I did what I supposed to do. But that's just what was on my heart, you know. And I just and I and I really and I just want to say that it's nothing that we can't give. Yes. It's nothing that we can't give. That's right. I'm plotting on money that I don't have on seeing how I can invest it in the movie. Okay? I'm plotting on money that I don't have to try to figure out how I can put it in the movement. Every strategy. Everybody that's trying, I'm telling you, I'm trying to destroy every dream you have in America. <laughs> oh, hold on. Want Africa? Want Africa? Want Africa? Touch one? Touch one? Touch all. Uhuru.